Hey what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm excited because in this video I can actually show you the finished product before I'm going to take you back in time and show you how I achieved that product. This was a fun house with a lot of nice details. You can see here I square mortised all my balusters uh, in the handrail and into the treads and floor. Turned out really nice. This is the great room which has a nice view of the staircase as well as a nice fireplace. But my favorite room is definitely the hearth room, which is where I'm going to be working and showing you where I installed this shiplap. I was super happy with how this room turned out. The scissor beams as well as the chevron shiplap pattern really set it off. Two key things I'm going to be focusing on. One is installation technique. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in the Midwest whenever you're using an MDF product. The other is the production mindset and the production techniques that I used to get this job done quickly. So hope you enjoy the video and I'll take you back in time a couple months right now to whenever I was installing this. Hey, what's up guys? I'm in the hearth room on a large custom home and I'm in the process of doing a chevron pattern shiplap detail that'll go around the front and then V up on the sides of this fireplace bump out. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here and kind of my thought process is, what my thought process is on how I'm going through this. I actually started this on Friday and I uh, didn't get any video of it, so I'm gonna bring you up to speed on what I did so far. The first thing I did was I climbed up to the top and I used my Stabila digital level, put it on the cathedral ceiling pitch, and I got my angle from my cuts from a couple different spots. This is important to get that angle just right. You cannot live without one of these levels, in my opinion, and be a productive carpenter. They're so quick for getting the, the exact angle that you need. So I found that my angle is gonna be 36.75. So that is the angle of the cut on this miter down to the center, as well as on the sides out here. So a little bit on the philosophy behind why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. I'm actually pre-assembling this V on the bench, which I'll show you in a minute. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get this joint done really well. I, I don't want this uh, to just be pieced together. I want to know that with expansion, contraction, this is not going to come apart. So I used hyper glue, which is a polyurethane hot melt adhesive on this joint uh, and I have no exposed fasteners on the front or anything it's very quick then uh, so I pre-assembled the V and I've actually got this outside edge hanging over uh, two or three inches actually almost four inches so I left this long and I'm going to cut this 45 degree miter with my track saw by mounting my track on here and cutting that in place the reason I'm doing that is because this would have been a really tough thing to execute trying to, to put piece by piece in, having this aligned perfectly with the miter in the middle and getting all these pieces dialed in perfectly, uh, cutting that compound miter also. So by leaving these long and cutting them with the track saw, I should be able to get a perfectly straight line going all the way up and not have to worry about things going off track and not being perfectly plumb whenever it's all said and done. So the next question is how did I pre-assemble those pieces? And to answer that, we come down here to my work table. It was gonna be really important that I keep that chevron pattern at the exact same angle, not just on my cut, but actually putting it together that it maintained that exact same angle as I work my way down. So to do that, I didn't just glue and stick these things together and hope that they were the same because you could have got things off a little bit and then put them, put them on the wall, you could have had a real mess. So my first set, what I actually did, I cut my 36 and three quarter degree angle and I actually just set them, the two pieces with the miter loosely on the table and then I took a couple pieces of scrap, put them along the edge and nailed them down. So now what I have is two pieces of one by two on my table that are going to give me my exact angle. Uh, as I pre-assemble these, it's going to keep everything the same. So I'm going to get my pieces in position 
right where I want them. I can pull one piece back. Then I take my hyper glue and glue, glue one edge. And then I can just stick it in place. And as I push that together, I'm also making sure that I'm pushing up against my one by two so that as I assemble that miter then, I can just take these pieces and put them into place and they were all the, the same and I didn't have any issues just by simply, simply making this jig with one by two nailed on the plywood. So that was a really good thing to do and I'm glad that I didn't just try and stick the pieces together relying on on the uh just whatever the miter gave me uh because you know things can happen and things can get off but by having these long frames of reference that ensured that i was at the same orientation the whole way up something really important to consider is what glue you're going to use whenever you're putting this stuff together I'm in the Midwest, so we have a lot of problems with humidity, and we actually use MDF very, very little. So uh, I have to make sure, first and foremost, that the material is acclimated in the house, and I don't have a bunch of humidity in the material, because this stuff moves like crazy. And then second, that I'm using a, a good glue that's actually going to bind the fibers together and hold it. In my opinion, uh, I tested some CA glue on this type of MDF and it did not have a lot of strength. Uh, and I tested hyper uh, hot melt adhesive on this and it was way, way better. All of the fibers tore out whenever I would try and break a miter just by putting it together. Now I could have also used biscuits and regular uh, yellow glue, PVA glue and that would have worked well also, but I would have needed to use a pinch dog or something to get some good clamping force on it. It would have taken longer. I would have had exposed nail holes. Um, so I didn't go that route. I went the hyper route because I could essentially just stick the pieces together, do about five sets, nail them on the wall, come back down, and the cure is uh, pretty much uh, instantly strong enough to go to work. So that's why I ended up using this product for my glue. The other thing you'll notice in the center of the chevron pattern it's sanded. I use my uh, Festool sander with a hard pad and I'm very careful to make sure that I'm not gonna over sand anything and I feather my sanding out a ways but I wanted that miter to be very smooth and flat that way I'm not seeing that seam all the way up the fireplace. So each piece is getting sanded very carefully also. I did all of this on a Friday afternoon. It's Monday morning now. And this was actually really easy to do and get done and uh, not a big deal at all. I did not do the top pieces because what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use my track saw to make this cut and then I'll fit these two top pieces in afterwards. And I left those off because I would not be able to make the miter on those pieces with the track saw. And then another note is, this is seven inch shiplap or nickel gap, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I left this space 13 and a half inches. That way I can scribe this top piece to the ceiling and I'll still have what looks like two full pieces right here. It's important to note here, I used a lot of caution as I was uh, marking my line for this cut. You want to make sure you're looking for any humps uh, in situations in the corner bead that might give you fits. For example, if I would have had a big hump in this corner bead and just marked top and bottom, I could have ended up with a situation where my cut was not out far enough whenever I went to install my side pieces. So. This is where having that eighth inch offset really helps just keeping that miter off of that wall a little bit. It gives you a lot of flexibility. The sparks that you're seeing whenever I'm making this cut is because my blade is actually hitting the metal corner bead. I had to have my blade set at that depth so it was just kind of something that had to happen. Nothing I could really do about it. 
All I know is that as I'm editing this video, I really wish I would have had the cordless TSC 55 track saw back whenever I was doing this project. Would have really helped. All right, I know I'm rightfully gonna get a verbal shellacking in the comment section for this, but uh, thought about not putting this part of the cut in the video. I did do it, I got impatient, and I shouldn't have been standing on top of this ladder like this to make a cut like this. In the moment, it really didn't seem that dumb, but going back and actually watching it on video, you realize how many things could have gone wrong and that it definitely wasn't worth it and I should have readjusted the ladder leaned it up against the wall in a more secure way. Risk mitigation 101 is that if you continue to do dumb stuff as a habit, it'll catch up with you eventually. Uh, I try not to do stuff like this because I know that it does catch up with you. Anyhow, I'm actually using the Festool HKC here. I've since purchased the Festool TSC cordless track saw and I really wish I would have had it to make this cut. TSC is a great saw, it's got a lot more power and this HKC was just really awkward, but it was all I had uh, track saw wise that didn't have a cord. Honestly, if I would have had a right hand and a left hand circular saw, I would have been really tempted just to freehand this cut with a pencil line. I think I could have done it just fine rather than uh, a lot of finagling with the track and clamping and stuff. One of my best purchases of 2019 was two of these DeWalt blowers. I've got one on site and one in the shop all the time and I use them a ton. They're super nice to blow off, clean stuff off without having to run and get an air hose. The cordless feature makes them super handy also. Um, I'll put a link in the notes below to this thing. Definitely a lot of bang for your buck with this tool. All right guys, so I'm working my way up the side now with my mitered pieces, same angle, except going the opposite direction. So this whole thing is like a W pattern. Um, some important notes though on expansion and contraction. So this is MDF, it's gonna move a lot if it's subjected to large humidity swings. So here I used hyper on this miter and then I put PL construction adhesive right in this area the whole way. So I'm isolating my movement to right here. So if it's going to expand and contract, it's going to push out and come in from this point and there's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna pull this apart. Say if I get shrinkage, it's not gonna break this miter right here. And the reason for that is I actually, whenever I made this cut, I kept it, the inside of the cut off of the drywall a solid eighth of an inch. So underneath here, you can see I can actually slide this piece up back behind there. So I'm nailing this strip on the back side here, but then this, I'm just nailing my miter together. So if this needs to shrink in the winter, it's got space behind here to go in and it's not gonna crack this joint. Same thing, if I would have been pinned tight here, right up against the drywall, and let's say um, I would have lost a lot of humidity and this would have wanted to shrink a lot, it could have pulled this apart. But the way I've got this set up, I'm isolating the movement here and it can come in and go out and everything's gonna be fine. It's not gonna break this miter or this miter. There will be built-ins installed on the side on this lower portion here, and that's why you don't see any pieces down on the lower portion. So this is an a this is actually not true shiplap. It's a TNG product, tongue and groove. We actually call it nickel gap. What I'm doing here is ripping off the back of the groove portion, and that's gonna help me to get all these pieces in a lot easier. Uh, it's gonna make a lot easier uh, alignment as I put these pieces in. When it comes to nailing these pieces on, you wanna get a good layer of glue. I'm just using Tight Bond One. 
I'm going to hit this side once with a kind of a thinner layer just to kind of prime it and seal that MDF. The biggest issue with MDF is that it soaks up the glue so you can end up with a dry joint. So I want to make sure I'm using plenty. I'm going to come back and hit this one again. A little bit, nice even thin layer. Now I've got this rabbited instead of a uh, dado now so I can just set this in versus having to try to push it down with a tongue and groove. This is just a lot easier. I'm using a 23 gauge DeWalt pin nailer here. I don't recommend this gun. Uh, had a lot of issues with it jamming. Senko actually just sent me their 23 gauge and it's been working great for me so far. I'm gonna put a piece of scribe molding down this wall later, so I'm not very concerned about this, getting this tight right here. I'm more concerned about this joint right here. So I'll just hit this with some sandpaper. And that's all there is to it. Just work all my way all the way up now. I want to take just a second to thank all you guys who are loyal subscribers. Uh, just rolled over 30,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. And I uh, just wanted to say thanks. Appreciate all you guys commenting, giving it a thumbs up, and providing all the good feedback in the comments section. I do read the comments, so if you've got any thoughts on improving the videos or things that you do different, I've always got open ears. Don't be afraid to say something and comment down there. Also, just want to say thanks to everybody who patronizes the links that I provide for the tools that I use. Uh, that's how I make the income that supports the video. Those are affiliate links, and I appreciate you guys making the effort, extra effort to use those. It helps me out, makes it worth my time to make these videos. So if you really enjoy this content, keep clicking those links, and uh, appreciate everybody watching, and we'll see you next time.